please support our vendors. This is all about self-sufficiency. We are living Marcus Garvey's reality. Support your own. How many of you run to Walmart after tonight, but you won't support your brother and sister in the back? Do you see what I'm saying? That systematic mentality that we have of walking past our brothers and sisters who are vendors, let's get away from that. Spend, share, exchange. This is all collectively what we're here to do. Marcus Garvey taught us this. Round of applause for you, our wonderful audience, patient and wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes. It is now time to present our guest speaker. Please give a warm, wonderful welcome to our guest speaker for tonight, 2019's guest speaker for Roots Extravaganza in honor of Marcus Garvey, Professor Clinton Hutton. Sisters, greetings. It's good to be here. It's a very good thing you're doing. Ajabalani. Freeze doggy. I've heard about it. In fact, I've heard it was here last time. Rupert. Professor Lewis. Rupert Lewis. Good. If we don't speak for our ancestors, we will not be able to speak for ourselves. And that is why it is important that this tradition of honor and Garvey is, that, that is the light that I see it. Very important to do. Garvey was born two years after the Berlin Conference, that event which formalized that process which some historians called the scramble for Africa. That is, European powers agreeing to the partitioning and colonial subjection of Africa after over 350 years of forcing millions of Africans into slavery outside of the continent. In this period of enslavement, one French planter in Martinique said during the 18th century that for slavery to continue, the safety of Europeans must be maintained by the way it treated Africans. Hence he made the statement, the safety of whites demands that we keep the Negroes in the most profound ignorance. I have reached the stage of believing firmly that one must treat, treat Negroes as one treat beasts. Meanwhile, another French slave holder said, policy and safety require that we crush the race of blacks by a contempt so great that whoever descends from it, even to the sixth generation, shall be covered with an indelible stain. These statements were quite common in justifying slavery and reflected and shaped the unimaginable barbarism and cruelty that Europeans visited upon Africans. These choreographed expressions of brutality were designed to, des to so desecrate the humanity of Africans that they would feel valueless, so much so that they would not fight to end slavery. They would not fight for freedom because they were nothing. Better to remain in slavery and better something and better serving white people than be free. Better, 
in slavery and have some human values by serving white people. That is to say, Africans must be treated in such a way that they would themselves perpetuate slavery. That, that was what the slave holder meant when he said, the race of Africans must be crushed by a contempt so great that whoever descends from it, even to the sixth generation, shall be covered with an indelible stain. And some Africans during slavery and after recognized, articulated, and labeled this in the level state among fellow Africans. And they pointed out the social, psychological, and the political consequences of those who were covered with that state. So, pointing out and exercising this state was one of Garvey's most important tasks. The central to the philosophy of Garvey. It is central to the way Garvey constructs identity and the relationship between identity and action. The way a man thinks or a woman thinks, according to Garvey, will direct the way that that person behaves. Garvey called this stain mental slavery. That was the name he gave to it, mental slavery. And in a speech in 1937 in Canada, he spoke about it. In fact, this is from that speech that Bob, and Bob, who actually said in an interview, Bob Marley I'm talking, in an interview, that his world, his role in the world is to fight for the Marcus Garvey revolution. Marcus Garvey says, emancipate yourselves, that while while someone else may free the body, it is a task of African peoples to free their minds from the stain that no one else can do it. None but ourselves can free our minds. None but ourselves. Gavi noted that the African Caribbean person, and this is an overgeneralization because he's a Caribbean man, and you learn from many Caribbean people. Because one of the things that Garvey did was to read the history, not just of people struggling against slavery, that part of colonialism we call slavery, or post slavery colonialism, but he also studied a lot of African history from antiquity to fight against racism and to show people of African descent that they are capable as anyone else because the first civilization in the world was African. Not only that, that the human species that exists all around the world today in various colors originally sprang from Africa. Eastern Africa and populated the world and through various processes we get different color, different hair texture and so on. So it was very clear on that. And that tradition preceded Garvey. I mean Frederick Douglass talk about these things and even before Frederick Douglass. Right? So Garvey noted that the African Caribbean person does not rely much on his mind. He seems to give way to his misfortunes. These misfortunes 
will not help him except he uses them as conscious realization of the advantages taken of him. Because he cannot climb by his own state of mind. Change your thinking and your whole life will be changed for better. That is central to Garvey's philosophy. Garvey was very big on that. And Garvey was above everything else a teacher. The finest. Garvey insists, as a man thinketh, so is he. Or as a woman thinketh, so is she. He was very clear on that. And therefore very clear on what the education system should be. The philosophy of education cannot be rooted in the way white people think about black people. If we internalize that system and make it be the way we think, if we think like this way, Bruno, the way we think about black people, then we are going to think, not just have that thinking, but we are going to behave the way they want us to behave. We're going to commit suicide. And we are going to, it is what it is, right? Okay. The condition in which we as a race find ourselves today is not altogether caused from external forces or power, but largely because we accepted our mean low position in life and have not in a big way exerted ourselves to shake off our misery and poverty, always depending on others, alien to us, to change conditions for us. Men, look within and not without at others. But God says, man's first duty to himself is to discover himself. Man's first duty to himself is to discover himself. Who am I here? What is expected of me by my creator? Man in this world is a supreme being. We must stand on our own two feet and face all challenges, circumvent the evils that necessarily will beset us, overcome the obstacles, and push forward to our goal. This, my dear friends, is the job of real men and women in a world of, of alien opposition determined to hold us back. We are not teaching garbage in our schools. Talk, right? We should be taught. And there are ways it can be taught. Thank you very much. Standing ovation for our guest speaker, Professor Clinton Hockey, all the way from the University of West Indies, Kingston, Jamaica. Please a warm welcome round of applause for such great, profound words. Marcus Garvey told us.